Hello, how are you doing? It's Kirsten Lee Belt. Good to see you. It's good to see you. It's Wednesday night, halfway through the week. We are on Wednesday, right? <laughs> are we on Wednesday? Are we on Wednesday? We're on Wednesday. Okay, it's Wednesday night, halfway through the week. How are you doing? What's your self-assessment of this week? Wow, you guys are really close. <laughs> I should say I'm really close to you. Um, good to see you. So the first thing that I want to say so that everybody hears me, because as you're jumping on, then you'll know. Uh, number one, always tell me if you're on the replay. Let me know where you're coming in from. That's always very helpful. Um, and if at any point in time you think that this is good information, please share it out to people. The more people that we can help with this whole insulin resistance conversation, the better. And the third thing that I want to say tonight is the glucose product is back in stock. And I know it's been kind of going in and out, but I'm just telling you, like... <laughs> I'm just letting you know as your very best friend, like don't delay. I I don't have inside information as to like if it's if it's back for a day, if it's back forever. If, I just don't know. Um, side note to that: if you do go on and you're buying the trio, you're refilling your trio because you need to get your sugars down and lose some weight before summer. Let me tell you, if you see that it is out of stock, or if you see that it is um, temporarily unavailable please contact me because I have some inventory because I'm thinking about you all the time. So I do have some inventory and I can ship it to you. I literally, I just packaged one up because somebody ordered one this morning and it wasn't on the website. Now it's there. It's available. Okay. So I wanted to talk tonight about protein because I do get this question a lot. You know, we in the, Oh, Manitoba, Canada. Fantastic. Listen in Canada, I think it's in stock all like I think it's been in stock this entire time. So if you're in Canada, you are very blessed and highly favored. Um, I don't know why that is. Modesto, California. Oh my gosh, fantastic. I love that very, very much. Excellent. So in the okay, Facebook group. I have a Facebook group is called Ditch Insulin Resistance for Women. I do a challenge in there every single month. Right now we're in the middle of a challenge. It's uh, I always do it at the beginning of the month so that you can get yourself equipped, get tools in your toolbox and then nail the month. So right now we're getting equipped and then you can nail April to the wall. And then on May in May we'll do another one and then you can nail the month of May. And you could see how this would then create these either like you could either think of it as creating building blocks where you're able to try to actually get your sugars down, your insulin down, so that you can lose weight because you can't if your sugars or your insulin are high, FYI. And um, then you can actually begin to think about like where you would be by the end of the year. Like, wouldn't that feel good? Or maybe you just want more energy. Maybe you're just, you're done with this whole exhaustion world, right? So um, that's kind of what we're doing in the Facebook group, but I talk about protein a lot. And so that's why I wanted to talk about that here. You know, it's so interesting to me because I know that even, um, you know, growing up, I, my mom was such a good cook. She was such a good, she was a home ec teacher. She actually got her degree in home economics and um, she didn't actually use that degree a lot. Like she did some substitute teaching, but for the most part, she was just um, uh, just a good cook at home. And then she also cooked in my father's restaurants. He had Italian restaurants here in Minneapolis. And that's just a, a part of my story as to why food became such a very important piece of the puzzle, right? So um, it's very authentic to me to think about the fact that, um, you know, when you use food to celebrate or you use food to mourn for a funeral, like that's kind of where a lot of that comes from, right? So she was this great cook. And, you know, we were never back in the 70s when I was growing up, nobody was afraid of meat. Nobody was afraid of, of real butter yet. Nobody was afraid of real cream yet. Nobody was, it was the, the seed oil invasion and um, toxic thinking hadn't taken hold yet. And so we, we ate meat just like normal, right? That was normal. But the thing is, is that everything was connect was mixed in with um, like pasta, like my mom would make goulash, she made such a good goulash. And, and I know it was like stewed tomatoes and a cre uh, like tomato soup. But if you even look on the on the back of a tomato soup can, oh my gosh, you guys, the ingredients are just terrible. But anyway, 
And so it tasted so good. And so it wasn't like we were having just protein. We were always mixing that protein in with all of the pasta and everything. And I know that there is a, um, there is a common thought process that if all you do is mix your protein, it, that if all you do is mix your carbs in with proteins, that you can alleviate or avoid insulin resistance. Well, unless you're using a glucose meter, I would say that is not great information. You have to know for yourself. I don't know anybody that's really getting away with it, FYI. So instead then, what I talk about a lot is making sure, and this actually comes from, this isn't my original thought process. This is because I love listening to people like Maria Emmerich, who talks a lot about, listen, your main, like the only macro that she counts is your protein. Like she wants to know where is your protein uh, at any given point during the day, right? So um when you wake up in the morning and, and and when you're snacking, et cetera. And the truth is, is that the more you think about protein, the more you can stabilize your blood sugar. If you're not mixing it with pasta, you can maintain your lean muscle mass. You can satiate yourself. You can feel that, that feeling inside of you of not just being full, certainly not being stuffed. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about, but you feel full and you feel satiated. And it's almost like there's this sense of well being because all day long, when you're really focusing on protein a lot, your blood sugars are so happy. Your insulin is so happy. And your insulin is a hormone. So just like your insulin can go upside down at the beginning, and, and it's kind of like, and this is my layman brain, okay, because I'm not a doctor. So my layman brain thinks in terms like of a visual of when your insulin starts to go wonky, it's like that domino effect. And it just kind of hits those dominoes of all your other hormones. Boom, 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 boom. And that's really frustrating, because oftentimes we're in our 40s when this happens. And we're like, Oh, dear Lord, it's gonna get worse. I mean, that was in my brain. <laughs> so all I'm saying is if we can have some simple strategies and tonight let's do protein as a strategy, get your protein in, stop thinking about all the other things. I know that's easier said than done. Um, but instead of thinking about um, all of the other pieces of your puzzle of all the things, hey, Christy, good to see you, all the other things that you want to eat, um, think about protein. And we're going to talk about it. I'm going to go, go through a few things. So that's a very interesting question. So um, she's asking, is a rash under your breasts related to insulin resistance? You know, I haven't heard that. But okay, so let's take that to um, a different example. So sometimes people can get um, like right kind of like in, let's say you are summertime, you've got tank tops on, you got a lot going on, and you can get kind of like rashes right in between, you know, and and because maybe you're, you know, hot or whatever, but also too, it can really mean yeast. And so of course, I certainly don't know what, you know, your specific circumstances, but that can show up like that. And that can then mean, I mean, yeast, yeast feeds on sugar. So it's, it's kind of almost like a, a roundabout connection, but I mean, the answer is kind of a short answer of sure. Why not? You know, Christy, you're a nurse. <laughs> you tell me. So is there a rash that could be under your breasts and be connected to insulin resistance? I would say, I mean, it's possible, but so you're definitely overweight and hypothyroidism. Okay. Very cool. I mean, not cool, but I understand what you're saying. Not summertime yet. Nope. Not yet. Okay. Well, and you know, the thing, yeah, that's just an interesting question, but I've definitely seen like, you know, where you can get like, like yeast, you know, build up and so forth. Yeast and sugar definitely go hand in hand. Yeah, they sure do. That's what Christy's saying. And she's a nurse. So it's quite possible. But let's just jump into a little bit of protein here. So I'm, I, I kind of always say this, but, you know, just not to be too boring, but I'm very streamlined in my eating. And, but the reason why is because I, and I have to say this, you're welcome, Carol. Oh, Lori. I know. She says, thank, thank me for my passion. I am very passionate and I'm super opinionated and I'm kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt too <laughs> when it comes to this conversation. I mean, not to other people, but I just mean like 
it really, 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 really bugs me. Let me know in the comments if it bugs you too, that these are some pretty simple answers and why can't we seem to get them when we go to the medical community? I mean, honestly, like Christy's a nurse. Do you have any idea how many nurses I have in my sphere of influence because of this kind of, like, because they're in it, they know it. How does that sound? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not confused. Anyway, okay. That thing is really weird. Okay. So, in talking about um, kind of maybe being a little bit boring with my food. Well, this conversation of, listen, it's so hard to, it's so, it, you know, don't go too restrictive. Be careful. Don't, don't, don't restrict yourself because then you're going to binge. You can't handle that. You can't, you need to make sure that you have balance balance. It's all about balance. I talked about this in the Facebook group the other day. And I'm like, I am so tired of that conversation. Because basically, number one, it's telling you that you're not you you don't like, like you're too weak, you can't figure this out. And then secondly, it's telling you that this is so impossible. Hey, Anna, good to see you. That this is so impossible, you'll never be able to figure it out. Well, you know what, that feels a lot to me like the marketing that has been given to us for years and years and years. You need this major program. You need this prepackaged food because you can't figure it out. That is not true. I focus on for my, myself, I focus on meats, eggs, full fat dairy, um, greens, mostly greens for, for vegetables. I mean, I know spaghetti squash is yellow, but basically green, very low, low starch. Um, uh, vegetables, berries for my fruits. That's pretty much the only fruit that I do. Um, and then like nuts and seeds, et cetera. And out of that, I can create so much because I'm using different flowers, et cetera, um, different flowers, different oils, and different sugars. My pantry looks different than other people's maybe, right? Is it okay to eat roasted beets or is it too high in sugar? That's a good question. I bet beets are kind of high. And I say that because I really like beets. <laughs> so I don't do beets. But um, we could look that up. We could look that up. I bet it's, I bet they're kind of high. But I wanted people to have like a visual. Let's talk about, okay, so you figured out that you cannot eat sugar or it will cause you to spiral out of control because of the intense insulin resistance. I know, Christy. I know. And it's hard to come to terms with that. However, once you do, it's actually easier once you've reined it in. It's kind of like... Um, well, it's just like any other habit or addiction, right? When you have a physiological response to something, it's easier to actually just be done and, and work really hard using all that brain space on your alternatives and nail your alternative. Like if you are a chocolate lover, then you find the best chocolate, whatever you want as, a, as an alternative for you. Does that make sense? All right, let's get to the protein. Okay, we're gonna do this. Gonna do this. So basically, I just kind of looked up for about three and a half ounces of like normal stuff that you would eat. So three and a half ounces of beef. Let me see here. Three and a half ounces of beef. And that's probably like a palm size of food, right? So maybe a palm size of food. Three and a half ounces of beef, 26 grams of protein. So now if you're thinking in terms of eating your eating the amount of protein in uh, your your uh, your goal body weight, for sure over 100 grams, so, you know, but let's just say your goal body weight, or even let's just start with that 100 grams. Well, three and a half ounces of ground beef, 26 grams of protein, um, three and a half ounces of Greek yogurt, like if you got plain unsweetened, same thing, I guess, right? Greek yogurt. I like Faye. Uh, it's really nice and creamy. 10 grams of protein, but that's still good. And actually Faye is higher than that. That's Greek yogurt. So all right, three and a half ounces. I wonder three and a half ounces would be, hold on. I want to look that. It's about a half a cup. So you could easily up that a little bit to get more protein in there because like Greek yogurt can run like 17 grams of protein. So that can be nice and high. But again, 
she said that's more than she thought it was going to be for the for the ground beef. I know. That's why I feel like this is such a valuable conversation because actually maybe we're doing better or maybe we can incorporate something. I'm going to make um some breakfast chili for my husband which is ground beef and chorizo, etc. And that is a really good source of protein. Really really good. Uh cheese. Three and a half ounces of cheese, 25 grams of protein. I want to make sure that I've got that right for the three and a half, three and a half ounces. Sorry. Cheese can be okay. On average, hundred grams of cheese is roughly equivalent to the, or shredded three and a half ounces, three and a half ounces of shredded cheese, 25 grams of protein. That's really high. Um, eggs, two eggs, about 13 grams of protein. Yep. Two large eggs, 13 grams of protein, about six to six and a half grams, uh, an egg. So that's why having only two eggs at breakfast is really not enough. It's, it's either not enough eggs or you can add ground beef to your breakfast. I've done that before where I've done eggs with ground beef with taco seasoning, and then maybe like some Cholula hot sauce or something. A chicken breast, three and a half ounces is going to run you 31 grams of protein. Isn't that good? 31 grams. And then when it comes to fish, let me jump on the fish one for a second because I did look that one up too. Three and a half ounces of fish typically provides approximately 20 to 25 grams of protein, depending on the type of fish. Some types of fish, such as salmon or tuna, may contain slightly more protein, while others like cod or tilapia may have slightly less. Overall, fish is a nutritious and protein-rich food uh, source. So, and then when it comes to fish, like, you know, and there's just nothing wrong with choosing canned chicken, canned tuna. Like, it's okay, right? Make yourself a, a tuna sal, a tuna mixture with, you know, whatever, mayonnaise, mustard, you know, throw some celery in there, whatever you like, or tuna, et cetera. Having stuff like that on hand is super helpful. You could even be mixing like tuna with eggs, like hard-boiled eggs. That would be a great you did pretty good on your protein today. Way to go, Christy. See, you're making strides. You just don't give yourself enough credit. Hold on. I want to see if I'm missing anything. Okay. It's still, yeah, I know beets are delicious, but you're trying to control your sugar intake. Yep. Even if it's veggies, I'm telling you, there's so much misconception out there <clears throat> because of marketing. And so you do want to be careful. That's why it's easier for me just to say focus on greens. It's just easier because then you don't have to question anything, right? You can just stay in a lane and kind of sit there because veggies have carbs, onions have carbs, everything has carbs. Like it's not that, and, and remember, carbs are not wicked. We just have to really manage them while we're turning things around. And, and you'll notice when you tighten your reins on certain things, you'll notice your body, your because it, because it's all about the insulin and the sugars, right? Because when you actually allow your body to come down, then it can actually begin to burn fat for fuel. And you're not on this hamster wheel all the time. It's better just to know the truth, to have somebody tell you the truth <clears throat> and to actually tell you, you know what? It does take a really streamlined thought process. You know what it does? It's actually a healing journey. This isn't a quick fix, but isn't it good to know that like somebody can, you know, uh, I always tell my, my testimonies, because if you start, let's say on the trio and you find yourself bringing your morning sugars down, therefore you've lost 14 pounds in two and a half months, you're happy, right? You're happy. And that's what's taking place because, um, it's through the lens of insulin resistance. We're not talking about through the lens of counting points or calorie deficit only, et cetera. You just saw a great recipe using canned tuna. That's awesome. I really should do that more often, to be really honest. I remember eating, you know, tuna casserole as a kid. Who did the tuna casserole with the, um, you crumple up the potato chips on top? So naughty. <laughs> oh, my stars. Oh, we used to eat that all the time. Okay, shoot. Okay. Can of tuna, shredded cheese, and egg mix all together and form... Oh, a raw egg. Form into patties and fry in a pan with butter. So tuna patties. That sounds delicious. Not going to lie. That sounds really, really good. Thanks for sharing that, Christy. I'm actually going to think about that. Because that's a great way. If you're a tuna person, you know, that's a good way. Now, if you're buying, um, you always want wild caught. 
every time you can find wild caught fish or you're going to try it. Awesome. Uh, or wild caught shrimp. So I like to go and get shrimp like at, even at Walmart, you can find wild caught off the Gulf of Mexico. And there's a ton of shrimp in the refrigerated section. Most all of it is farm raised. Don't buy that. Buy the wild caught because the farm raised uh, could mean that it's being raised in these ocean farms where they are in um, cages or however you would do that for shrimp nets. And there's a lot of um, disease that then they have to take care of. And anytime you have that, then you're adding back in chemicals and things to deal with that before it gets to you. And you just don't want that. Just spend the extra couple dollars, get the wild caught, and then enjoy a really good meal is would be what I would think about. Canned salmon patties. You could do the same thing with canned salmon. What a great idea. Yes, you could do canned salmon. That's a really great idea. Yes. And do you make them the same like with a raw egg, cheddar cheese? Uh, and what else did she say? That was it. Egg, cheese, and salmon. Is that what you're doing on yours? And you know what you could also do on this? When I went through my pantry today in the Facebook group, um, I talked about the pork panko. And if you haven't tried that for breading something and then frying it, that's a really good option. Um, I like to use the pork panko on uh, chicken wings, like uh, air chilled chicken wings, like from Costco. And you bread them with the pork panko and put them in the air fryer and they come out really crispy. It's really nice. Costco has a great tuna in a can. It's so funny. When you said that, I thought about Costco because if I'm not mistaken, don't they have like the albacore tuna or whatever, or they've got the good things. So no cheese. She uses pea protein crumbs from Aldi. Very good. Julie, the pea protein. Now, see, I don't do any, I, I, I don't do the pea. I'm trying to think. How are the carbs on that? I'd be super interested to find out because I do have like my own uh, pea protein here in the house. I'm trying to think of if it's straight pea protein though. P pea protein crumbs from Aldi. That's super interesting. I wonder what the what the carbs are on that. You'll look. Yeah, and you don't have to do it right now, Julie. You can let me know at another time too, so... I'm not going to make you run around a house and figure it out. But um, truly, truly, if you if you focus on a couple of different things, you can make such a shift in the way that you're getting results for anything. And so the one shift is think whole food as much as humanly possible. Ditch if, if you this is to save not just your own frustration of being on a hamster wheel, but this is also to save your brain space. Because if you have to constantly be thinking to yourself, I wonder if this prepackaged food is good enough. I wonder if this prepackaged, this mixture, this, this marketing, this slogan, this whatever. It's just, it is so much easier to get super streamlined and go, I'm going to have ground beef. I'm going to have eggs. I'm going to have, you know, asparagus. I'm going to have, it's just easier to do that, you know? Um, and I feel like that is one way that your life can be so much better. The second way is just think protein all the time because then you at least know that you are setting yourself up to actually, it's like burning oak. So when I was raising our kids, we lived on a 20 acre hobby farm and my husband installed an outdoor wood stove and then he like created piping in our little farmhouse that we were redoing. We remodeled the farmhouse and um, he, we would have to stock the stove. And so every fall we would go and we would order like 10 cords of wood and we would chop wood and have, you know, splitter and all that stuff. Well, you always would buy Oak. You would never buy 10 cords of pine to heat your home because Pine will burn fast. It'll burn hot, but it'll burn fast. And then poof, it's gone. And that is very frustrating when you're having to go out there because I'm in Minnesota in the middle of winter, it's 20 below out and you have to put more wood in the wood burner. It's the exact same thing. Your carbohydrates are like pine and they burn up fast. And your protein is like burning oak. 
So you could have eggs and ground beef in the morning, like eggs, taco, meat, and hot sauce. Let's just make that up for a second. That sounds really good right now. Um, and if you have a you know nice you know serving of ground beef and a and couple of eggs and etc., just pay attention to how your body feels because you are when you are steady eddy, the rest of your body is just like your mind is more clear. Your tummy isn't growling and freaking out on you. You're like, oh, I've got some energy and I, you feel good. And if you start to do things like that and assess yourself, you'll be shocked at how good you feel. And the longer you keep your sugars and your insulin down like that, the better you're going to start sleeping at night. Because what you're doing during the day is showing up at night. That's what's happening with that. So isn't that interesting, though? I love that. I love that very, very much. I'm going to have to check some things out at Costco. I'm going to have to, have to do that because um, now that you guys are talking about salmon patties and tuna patties, you're right. Those would be great. So, all right. Well, that's what I wanted to chat about tonight because I feel like some, doing something that's super tangible for your everyday universe. You can still jump into the Facebook group, by the way. Um, we're doing the, uh, today I did pantry and refrigerator and um, tomorrow we're going to do some supplementation and Friday I'm going to do a recipe and I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'll figure that out. I'm listening to some of the suggestions that people have around me. Um, and you can always go to my, the website is kirstenleebelt.com, my first last name.com. There's a Facebook blue button there. You can just jump into the group that way. Um, pinned to the top of the group is, I think I pinned today's. I'll check and see if I pinned today's pantry. I think I did. And you'll see that right away. Um, and then also too, on my website at the very top, I have a personal message, but then I also have, um, you'll see the targeted supplementation and the trio. And I'm telling you this because it's back in stock and it's kind of been a little, um, I keep checking it to be really honest. <clears throat> it's been a little bit of a journey. And so I want to make sure that everybody who is already my customer and has already, it needs to refill. Yep. It's still in stock needs to refill. It's in stock. Don't wait because I don't know if it's a moment, just going to be honest. Um, Cause that happened a couple of weeks ago. That's why we were out of stock again. Um, or if you're brand new, if you're on Instagram, you can go to the top of my Instagram page and I have a highlight bubble of trio testimonies. So if you're looking to get your sugars down, if this is making sense to you, that insulin resistance, insulin is the key to open up your cell to get your, your glucose into your cell for energy, right? And if it doesn't happen anymore because you're resistant, you're exhausted. And then insulin is this really amazing fat storing hormone. And so it's going to store all of that excess as fat. And when your insulin and or your sugars are high, you can't lose weight. So I've had people who have been on Ozempic. I have people who have been working for three years as a type two to try to lose weight that couldn't lose anything until they finally started on this trio. And that's just, it's just a biological conversation. It's not hype. It's not nothing. It's just a biological conversation of getting your internal system functioning from the inside out. And once you start to do that, you know, I would never, ever make any weird, bizarre claims like it works for everybody Never, because I don't know everybody's level of insulin resistance, right? I don't know the other factors that are in your life, like the meds that you're on or et cetera, or sometimes the food addictions that you're dealing with. And I do understand that piece as well. But looking at the testimonies would be very helpful. 12 carbs per 20 ounces of all DP protein breadcrumbs. See, now to me, that's kind of high. I don't know if I... That's for me though, but Julie, you're getting really good results in what you're doing. And so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Um, for me, that would be kind of high. Um, I feel like that would, I, I feel like I would love it and it would stall me. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. But I know myself and I'm 59. And so my world is different than your world or your world. It's just everybody has to, um, Everybody has to assess and you're, you'll know. That's why I make the Maria Emmerich bread because it's an egg white protein powder bread. And so it's very, very low in carb, very high in protein. And that gets me further in my endeavors. 
Thank you, though, for telling me that. I didn't even know it existed. So I appreciate that a lot, actually. So if anybody ever has any questions, I'm just a DM away. You can always hit me up in Messenger. That's pretty much how this happens. A lot of people will just take some time um, and, and do that. Um, if you're on Facebook or um, YouTube, you can always put Trio in the comments and I can get back to you. Um, on Instagram, you would have to just DM me because your message will go away the minute I hit the button to post this video. So you either have to come back to the video or DM me if you have questions or you want to know more about the trio. So anyway, but I hope that helped give you some ideas. Think in terms of eating protein and um, you can get a lot of protein, even in just a little bit of ground beef. So very good. All right. You guys have a super blessed night and I will see you again in a couple of days. I'm sure that I will. And who knows, maybe I'll even come on live and make some food. I'm working on it. One last thing before I go, I'm working on getting proper equipment so that I can do more food every now and then. Like I can share, share in the goodness of making food. So I'm working on things. So, all right. You, oh, did I have a recipe with stew beef? No, I did not. You're welcome, Christy. No, but if I had beef, stew beef meat, I wonder what I would do with that. I would probably marinate it because it might be tough. And then I would probably, <laughs> I'd probably bread it with the pork panko and then fry it. If I, I would probably make steak tips out of it. Or I would use my Instant Pot because you can make stuff very, very tender, very quickly with your Instant Pot. Any kind of meat that might be tough, voila, Instant Pot is amazing for that. So anyway, all right, have a super good night, you guys. Really nice hanging with you. See you later, Christy. Have a good night.